Well, now it's the new year, and it's a great time to consider what types of things we'd like to be changing in our lives. In front of me, I have five boxes, and each one of them contains one thing that I'd like to change. You might be wondering, why would I care what one random person on YouTube would like to be changing about their life? Well, these are just my Android New Year's resolutions, ones that I think you might be interested in incorporating in your workflow in 2022. Thank you for joining me for today's Thought Fuel episode. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Every week, I give you seasoned advice on how to build professional Android apps in bite-sized chunks. Now, let's open these boxes. All right, so what do you think? Start small and go big, or start big and then go small? I'm gonna start small and go big. Let's see what's inside my first box. <laughs> Alrighty. This one says optimize for all screen types. And by that, of course, I'm referring to phones, tablets, desktops, and foldable devices. That's a big market. So why is it worth the effort to do this? Google is placing a renewed emphasis on building an operating system for large screens with Android 12L. This OS is due to drop later this year, and it's a culmination of their biggest effort yet to support large screen types. This OS is optimized for desktops, tablets, as well as foldables. And since we're on the topic of those, let's see what the numbers look like. As of the fourth quarter of 2021, this is what the market looks like for non-phone Android devices. There are 100 million new Android tablets that have been activated recently, bringing the total worldwide to 250 million large screen devices. And of course, this accounts for tablets, foldables, as well as Chrome OS devices. And speaking of Chrome OS, it's seeing a 92% year over year growth. It's currently the fastest growing operating system in the world, and each one of these devices are considered large screens. They're also capable of running Android apps straight out of the box. Microsoft and Amazon have partnered to bring Android apps to Windows 11 later this year. And in a separate effort, Google is bringing Google Play Games to Windows. With all of the innovation that's occurring in this landscape, I have a free course that will teach you how to build applications that are optimized for all of these devices. By the end, you'll have an optimized app for use on phones, tablets, desktops, and even foldable devices. All that said, I definitely want my app to be on this bandwagon. All right, so now let's take a look at my second goal, which I have here in this box. This one says, placing a renewed emphasis on accessibility. Now, you might be wondering, well, isn't my app already good enough? Well, unless you've taken special efforts to make it that way, more than likely Google would say it's not. That's why they've offered us a bunch of tools in order to help us achieve this goal. For starters, the Layout Inspector in Android Studio has a bunch of information that I can tell you based on just a generated preview. This is going to be your first line of defense, and it will tell you things like if things are too close, the contrast isn't quite right, or even if labels are a bit too small. Next, they have the Accessibility Scanner. This is a free app on the Google Play Store, and I definitely recommend downloading it and exploring it. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't used this tool nearly as much as I should have, but this year, all of that is going to change. Finally, we have the TalkBack service. And no, it doesn't turn your phone into a grumpy teenager. It's Android's screen reader application. Every single phone has it. If you've never used this before, I have a video on YouTube that you'll probably find very helpful. This is the real test to see if Android really understands your app. You can have a great shiny looking application on the surface, but it can be a total disaster underneath in terms of how your OS is interpreting it. The Android TalkBack service is a great way to root out these issues. Now, I really enjoy accessibility, and I can go on and on about this, but I think this is a good start. If you think about it, people who started using phones and apps many years ago are still using them. Sometimes their eyesight isn't quite what it used to be, or in some cases, even their hearing. For example, my 89-year-old grandmother uses her tablet all the time, and if she didn't have great applications which supported accessibility services, her ability to use this tablet would be greatly limited. And let's move on to my next goal, which I have right here inside of this box. Ah, this one's a fun one. This is Jetpack Compose and Material 3. Now, let's talk about Jetpack Compose here for a minute. This is definitely the way the market's going, and in my opinion, 2022 is a great time to start adopting it, whether you have a new app or whether you have an old app and you need to start retrofitting it in. Now, let's take an example as a parallel here for a minute. 
Years ago, Google stopped recommending Android support libraries even though it used to be the de facto standard. They replaced it with Android X. So unless you're building a really old application, you're probably not using the support libraries anymore. The same thing is slowly happening to Java now that Kotlin's on the scene. More and more libraries are being written exclusively in Kotlin without any Java support whatsoever. For example, Jetpack Compose is a great example of that. It seems like Java is definitely being left behind. I predict that the Vue libraries that we've been using for the past 15 years are soon going to suffer the same fate. Let's just think about it. 15 years is a really long time in terms of development, and Jetpack Compose has come to replace it. Now, let's turn our attention towards Material 3. This is relatively easy to adopt. All you have to do is follow their basic rules. And when you do so, you're going to get light mode, dark mode, and the material U support. If you're interested in learning more about this, both Jetpack Compose and Material 3 are covered in the course that I mentioned earlier on. We all know what it's like whenever you open up an application either late at night or early in the morning and it doesn't support dark mode. It can feel a lot like this. So. My commitment to my users this year is to not burn out their retinas by honoring the system's theme. That means on Android 12 and above, you'll also be getting the theme that's set by their background as long as you use Material 3. Sound good? Lights! Now let's take a look at the big boxes, starting with this one. All right. This one says, regularly examine my Jococo test coverage reports. Android Studio has some great support for giving you coverage reports inside of the gutter of your IDE, but it's never going to be as thorough as the tool which generates those reports in the first place. This is especially true for Jetpack Compose. Right now, if you want to quote unit test your Compose code, you'll actually need to run instrumentation tests. It's unfortunate that that's the case right now, but it's true. Jococo can record coverage for both your unit tests and your instrumentation tests and zip them together into one report. That's pretty handy. Plus, it's a great way to get deep insights into the code that I'm actively writing right now. It's one measure of my project's health that I always want to keep an eye on, and Jococo will help me do that. And now, that just leaves me with one last box. Let's open it up and see what's in there. This one says, implement a quarterly patching cycle. So it's a little bit more of a utilitarian goal and well, hence the utilitarian box, but it's definitely an important one. It can be really easy to get caught up into daily development and forget to keep your libraries up to date. Of course, you want to do these upgrades in a controlled manner, that way you can test them and make sure that nothing broke. I found if I let this process lapse more than a quarter of a year, things can get really difficult. Libraries will often have major and minor upgrades. Almost every library in your project will need to be upgraded, and it takes a ton of testing to make sure that everything's still working properly. I just finished one of these processes that were about two quarters overdue, and it was not fun. One star would not recommend. That's all the more that I have for you today. If you found this video helpful and you haven't subscribed yet, I definitely recommend that you do that. I have new content exclusively for Android developers every Monday at noon, and hope to see you next time on ThoughtFuel. Thanks, and happy coding.